Hi, Lewis Kemper here. I've had a few requests to show how to use um, Photoshop and bridge combination and camera raw to create an HDR image. So this is like the technique I showed using Lightroom, but I'm going to show it here just using Photoshop alone for those of you who don't own Lightroom. So here I have five images bracketed for an HDR shot. So I'm going to click on the first one, hold the shift key and click on the last one and it's going to select all five of these images here in Bridge. Then I'm going to go up to Tools, down to Photoshop, and over to Merge into HDR Pro, just like you would normally create an HDR image using Photoshop. And now Photoshop's going to open up these images it's going to process the raw files, it's going to stack them together and create an HDR image. So this will take just a moment for Photoshop to go through that process. So it's a good time to fill up your coffee cup, run to the restroom, answer an email, and before too long we'll have our image ready to go in Photoshop. So we've got three of them done, you can see here right now. Working on the fourth. And now finally the last image is being added to that group. And we see it's aligning them. Now it's going to put them into the HDR image and bring up Photoshop's HDR dialog. All right. Now normally, by default, this is set to 16-bit and you'll see a dialog box that looks like this with all these controls over here. Well, if you've used any of uh, Lightroom's controls or Photoshop's controls, you know that it's not the best way to make an HDR. So what I need you to do is go up here where it says 16-bit and change that to 32, and you lose all of those controls. Now all you see is a histogram here, and if you're just curious, each one of these red marks is a stop, so it's telling me there's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 stops of information in this image now. So that's much more than your digital sensor can handle or your film. So once this happens, even though it's cut off from my screen here because it makes this huge, well actually I can size this up so you can see the bottom. Once you change that to 32 bit, all you need to do is say OK. and Photoshop's creating the Merge to HDR 32-bit file. Now when it does that, it opens up this file into Photoshop here, and you can see it doesn't look very good yet and it's an untitled HDR2 here it says. So here's the trick. You need to go over here to save as do a save as and let's see where I want to put this. I'm going to put this on my oh, sorry for all these annoying Photoshop messages about here we go. I'm going to put this in my trash and we'll call this we'll just call this PSD for Photoshop HDR2 so I can find it. But the trick is you don't want to save this as a PSD image. You want to come over here to Format where it says Photoshop and you want to drop down to TIFF. That's the important part. You need to save this into a 32-bit TIFF file. And now when I hit Save you'll see it's coming up to 32-bit float. There's no image compression and I'm on a Mac so it's on a Mac. If you're on a PC you'd have it on PC and say OK.
Now you need to open up that TIFF file within Camera Raw. So what I'm going to do now is I can close this image and I don't need to save it again. I'm going to go to File Open and here's my Trash This folder and we're going to go to the PSD sorry it's this network connection stuff that Photoshop does. Here's the PSD TIFF only here for the format now I want to come up to Camera Raw. So you want to go down to that format where default would be TIFF because it's a TIFF image and move up to Camera Raw. Now when I say that and I open this image it's going to bring it up in the raw dialog box. And let me resize this window, this dialog box, so you can see all of it. Now I can work with all the sliders that I'm used to. So we can look at the exposure is going to be that midtone area. So maybe I do want to lighten up the exposure a little bit. I want to bring down the highlights. And we can open up the exposure even more. Bring down those highlights. I can open up the shadows if I would like. Maybe bring down the whites a little bit. And now you can see I have a very realistic looking HDR image and the colors aren't all blown out and weird which is what you get in Photoshop. I have all the detail down here in the brightest highlights. I've got detail in the darkest shadows of the image and I'm using this uh, with all the controls that I'm used to here in Camera Raw. So if I wanted to I could add a little clarity to make the midtones sharper. I could add vibrance if I wanted to punch up the color a little bit. I can work again, you know, working with the exposure a little bit. You could then, if you wanted to, go to the curves dialog box and you could work on the curves portion. And if I go to point curve, I can lock down my shadows. I can lock down my brighter areas and I can work just here on the midtones. Lighten that up. So I have all the familiar controls that I'm used to found in Camera Raw working to create this realistic HDR image. And then you can open up as an, I got it set to open as smart objects or you can have it open up as an image into Photoshop. So if I open as an image here in the Photoshop you'll see we've created a beautiful HDR image of which then you can do anything that you would normally do in Photoshop. So that's the tip and technique for using Photoshop and Camera Raw to create beautiful HDR images. So remember if you want more Photoshop or Lightroom tips and techniques to go to my website lewiskemper.com and go to the training and you can buy either Lightroom training DVDs or Photoshop training DVDs right there. Or you can sign up for digital house calls to receive one-on-one -on -one personal training in either Photoshop or Lightroom. Thank you very much.